In this video, I'll give you the 10 best settings for new players of the MCC to have. These tips will greatly improve your gameplay, connection, and overall user experience. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. With the Master Chief Collection recently on the Steam Summer Sale at half off, it was a steal. And so I'm sure there are many new people to this game. So in this video, I want to give you the 10 best settings for you to have to optimize your gameplay, network connection, the reduced lag, and overall user experience. So if you like these tips and trick videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So we're breaking this video up into three sections. This first section, we're going to be talking about the connection. There are three important tests when it comes to networking in the MCC. An important thing with MCC is to make sure to have cross-play enabled. The way you do that is by having input-based matchmaking disabled and platform-based matchmaking disabled. Input-based matchmaking, making it so that players on mouse and keyboard and players on controller can play together. Platform-based matchmaking will allow PC players and Xbox players to play together. Obviously, enabling this will make it so then you can only match against the input device you selected. And same thing right here. And the same thing with platform-based matchmaking. Enable it, make it so you only match against players on console, only on PC. So for best matchmaking time, so you don't have to take so long to search for a match, have these both disabled. Next is region selection. You can actually select what servers you connect to with the MCC. Now, for the most part, the game does a pretty good job of putting you in rather low ping lobby as at least the best of its abilities, but say you're in a less populated area and you want to make sure you don't connect to certain servers, like I make sure I don't want to connect to Brazil, so I'll just take that off the selection right there. This just gives the user more ability to select their experience a little bit better to reduce latency. So go through and select which servers you want to have and deselect the ones you don't want to connect to. Another really important feature for your privacy on playing MCC is having relays turned on. What this does, it masks your IP address just so that you don't run across any people who are trying to boot you out of lobbies or anything like that. It just makes it so then you have a much more secure experience. And this does not add latency to your gameplay experience. It only masks your IP address. Address. So if you're a streamer, this is very important to have on. Next, let's go into the user experience. And this next part is actually a bit of more of a tutorial, but also helps you find custom games that you would really like to play. On PC, there is no file share feature. So what you have to do is find your friends online, look into their file shares and download their game types and maps. The way to do that is you click on your little person icon, click on your name, select find player and search for someone who you think has good game modes. YouTuber iSpyful is known for custom games, so let's search under his name right there. You find his profile, you select his file share right there, and here you can select your game types and maps, so you can select on maps right here. And you can see all the lists of different Forge maps that he has created, a ton. Let's so say you want to play Left 4 Dead right on Foundry, select that, click download, say yes, downloaded. And you do the same process for the game type. Next one's a privacy setting for invite or friends only to join your game. The way you do that is within the multiplayer selection right here, you go over to your name, select my game session up here, and there you can choose invite only or friends only. Next under the accessibility tab is the chat box for PC. Now you have text chat available for all players, only your team or only just your squad. Personally, I have mine set to all players just because sometimes it's fun to message with the entire lobby. There's also text filtering so that then you don't have to worry about people spewing some toxic nonsense in chat. I have mine disabled because sometimes it can be a little too strict in things you want to say, but that's all up to personal preference. Next, we're going to go to the gameplay settings. These settings will directly affect your gameplay experience while playing the MCC. I'm sure many of you guys are on controller, so let's go to the gamepad setting here. And there you can select the various different options you would like to have. For a button layout, personally, I like to use Bumper Jumper. A lot of people like to use Bumper Jumper as it allows you to jump without having to take your thumbs off the sticks. Recon is another really popular one. Of course, you can just run default if that's what you would like to play. A feature that was patched in a while ago is aim control. This would make it so you can switch between modern and classic aim. Now you're probably thinking classic aim. Well, I wanted to play just like the old Halo games because that's why I'm playing this game, right? Well, not exactly. This video comparison from Y, who check out his channel, I have a link in the description down below, does a great job of showcasing the classic aim versus modern aim. Classic aim has issues with diagonal aiming. 
more modern smooths it out for a much more accurate experience. You can see right here with this play test where you can see example how much the left one's wiggling around while the right one is moving just fine along the post. And almost everyone I know who plays this game uses modern. So this would be one I would highly suggest using this setting. Of course, you can try out classic and see how that works for you as well. When it comes to sensitivity, it's really personal preference. Most people go down to two. Some people go all the way up to 10. Personally, I run 5.5, the acceleration of five with a dead zone of 10%. Personally, I like to play on mouse and keyboard as it's just my personal preference and the different settings right there definitely make a difference. I currently run a 1200 DPI with my sensitivity at 1.5, zoom sensitivity at one. For mouse and keyboard sensitivity, it's more about the space that you have to control your character rather than exact numbers. Cause you'll probably hear a lot of people running, say you have to run this number and this number when it comes to your sensitivities. That's not exactly true. The best thing to judge your sensitivity on is your surface area for your mouse to move around. And if you can do a 180. So for me, example right here is I'll be sit right here. And if I do a 180, it puts me to the edge of my mouse pad right there. And that's about the sensitivity that you generally want to have. So then you can do quick 180s to turn around for like your FPS games. That's why my settings, where it comes to sensitivities and stuff like that, I have it set at 1.5 with a one zoom scale at around 1200 DPI, if I remember correctly. So it's not exactly about what numbers you have, it's more about your ability. So if you're a guy who likes to play with mouse and keyboard, you like to plant your wrist and not really move your arm a whole lot, you're of course, you, like I'm doing that right now, I can only do about like a 75% turn, 60% turn right there from just planting my wrist. I like to use a little bit of my arm. That's why I'm able to do that sensitivity. So it's more about how much surface area you have to move around and your personal play style. But for most shooters, the general rule of thumb is your max turn radius should be your 180 and that's your sensitivity. You can also change your FOV on the MCC. And personally, I like to run 105. You can go up to 120 and you can go as low as 70. I believe the original version is at 78 FOV. It's a bit small for me, so I like it right around 105. It needs to be the sweet spot between visibility without having too much distortion. Cause when you go up to 120, you get some outward distortion, which kind of will make it feel kind of odd playing, as well as will make your targets in the center of your screen actually smaller. So make it actually kind of more difficult for you to hit your shots but generally anything from like 90 to 110 it's a sweet spot so here's what i'm talking about when it comes to the fov experience so let's go to the lowest setting possible when it comes to your fov settings so we'll go all the way down to 70 and keep an eye on that bench i'm not going to move my cross here at all i'm going to main maintain it at lowered right at 70 right here and now let's go up to the maximum setting of 120 right here save that back out you can see how much smaller that target is on your screen. So having that max FOV does allow more spatial awareness, but it may actually affect your ability to aim on the screen itself for target acquisitions. So that's why when I go into my settings, I personally like to run at right about 105, 190 even would work well. As it's just a nice little middle ground between the two. I also like to lock my frames just as so then my system doesn't have to work any harder than it needs to. I have mine set to 120, you can go up to 180, 240 even. You can also even just have it on unlimited. Under the gameplay tab, you can actually choose if you want to have your crosshair position lowered like the classic versions or centered for a more modern experience. Now I did do a comparison video a while back comparing lowered versus centered crosshairs and the reason why I like running lowered for the most part is just because one it's more classic and true to the original experience as well as you get more vertical visibility. As you can see right here this is what it looks like at centered crosshairs. Keep an eye at the top of the screen here that you're not able to see on the top of the arch. But once I go into my settings and switch to the lowered crosshairs you'll be very surprised of the results. Now, as you can see, did not change my crosshair position at all, only changed it to lowered, and you can see that you can now see the top of the arch just fine. And that's a little side-by-side -side comparison just for examples right here as well. As you can see, my crosshair did not move at all. I only changed it from centered to lowered crosshair and gave me so much more vertical visibility. That's why I like to run lowered. Because most of the time when you're playing Halo, you're more worried about what's above you than what's below you. And those are the 10 tips for you to get better at the MCC. If these settings helped you, let me know in the comment section down below. If you're new to the channel or missed any content from me recently, as I do upload daily, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to a playlist that has all the most recent Halo news videos. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.